Um, our next guest here at Mainframe, you know him as Police Chief Jim Hopper from Stranger Things. He played Hellboy in 2019. He's in the he's plays Red Guardian in the upcoming uh, Black Widow movie. Guys, the legendary, the one, the only, Mister David Harbor. How are you doing, sir? Thank you, man. There we go. Look at that, right in the frame. What's up, Chicago? How's it Chicago. going, man? People are so excited that you're joining us here on Mainframe. <laughs> That's very sweet. I uh, I'm gonna apologize, or uh, or I don't know if I'll apologize, but I will say things are getting weird in quarantine with it's the facial good. hair. It's looking so really long. good. It's the first time I've been on camera with this. Uh, I think it's called a horseshoe mustache. <laughs> you got the cowboy mustache for sure. <laughs> I want to. Can I give you a high five real quick? Hey, I just want to kind of do a. Let's do a virtual go. high five wait, wait, here. Hold on. I know I, it's backward. Mirrors. Ready. Yes. Oh, yes. that was good, man. Oh, I'm awesome. giving you that high five because we just watched the movie Extraction uh, oh, last yeah. night on uh, on the interwebs. Oh my god! Can we talk for just a second about Extraction? A amazing movie. Like oh, the cinematography yeah. on that movie was insane. But yeah. I really want to talk about that fight sequence uh, <laughs> between you and Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, I mean, right, Hellboy yeah. Thor, yeah. go and edit. It was directed by a stunt guy, this guy, Sam Hargrave, who does all the stunts for the Avengers movies and all that stuff. He does second unit director of all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, he really and his team were like, they really knew how to do that stuff. Uh, but I was pretty impressed with myself, I have to say. I'm not really into that stunt stuff, but there was one point when I went in for ADR to do you know, like some grunts during that fight. And I saw this one shot of me when I spin him around, I hit him twice in the shoulder kind of, and then throw him down. And I was like, thanks for speeding up the film guys. Cause it looks like I'm really fast. And they were like, we didn't speed up the film. You are that fast. And I was like, that's something you just tell the actors. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, that's the oldest yeah, trick in the book. Is, David. It probably is. It probably is. How long did that uh, fight scene take to shoot, uh, to train for, or did you just well, go at it? No, we didn't do hardly anything. I mean, I showed up. I think I shot that whole movie like a week in Thailand. So, you know, I showed up and it was pretty full on. Like I just went there. And again, of course, a lot of it is uh, my stunt double. Like, you know, and, you know, because there, <laughs> there were some points too. I do have to say this about Chris Hemsworth. There was one point when we were starting where he – he like kind of barrels into me and they wanted me to, I did this move where I just kind of like hit him off me and like shove him off. And I tried that. And for the first time he came into me and I did that thing. And it was like hitting a side of beef, like a cow. <laughs> I could not get more like a bull. Like I could not get him off me. I was like, damn, he's a very dense individual. Just like a lot of density. Um, but yeah, we we like worked for a week and we shot that thing in like I think it was two days we shot the fight. So it was pretty quick. I mean, they were fast. These guys were really fast. They knew what they were doing. It's amazing the stunts in that movie. I don't want to just talk about extraction all day, but I was just really blown away. And you can tell it was almost directed by a stunt coordinator because the stunts are nuts in the camera movements and just the way they follow people jumping off buildings and running down yeah. hallways. Yeah. Yeah, there's nobody that could do that except him. Yeah, yeah. Sam, really incredible. Well, jumping the the, the shark here, guys. Uh, da uh, Hopper lives, man. Oh, man. come on! You guys have seen the uh, trailer for Wait. a season of Stranger Things that we hopefully will be able to shoot. So where are we at? One day. Huh? Where are we at in the production? Um. Uh. Yeah. I could, we could talk about this. I mean, Jesus. It's. Uh. We. I think we shot like about four weeks. Like we were two weeks in Vilnius, Lithuania, and that's where we shot that teaser that you saw on the railroad. Um. And then we came back, and they started shooting a little bit in Atlanta, and I. I. Um. We had a table read with everybody. I think it was like March second or third. Um. And then I shot another couple days and then I came back um, and they shot for a couple more weeks and then they got shut down. So I think it's been like a month. Uh, we shot like a month, month and a half or something. But, you know, it takes us like eight months to shoot the show, at yeah. least eight months. It's a big show. It usually takes about a month an episode. So we're just at the beginning, you know, and I hope we get back soon so we can get it out. But we'll, we'll have to see. 
We got a uh, our first super chat. Thank you so much for donating, by the way. Super chats. Uh, Joshua oh, Pallas says, "Yeah, he says, Mister Harbor, tremendous fan. How was it jumping between uh, the worlds of Suicide Squad, all time favorite comic book movie, and the upcoming Black Widow?" Um, is great. You know, I mean, I didn't have much to do on Suicide Squad, so. Uh, um, I have a lot more to do in Black Widow, so that was a lot more fun for me. I much prefer like shoots where I have a lot to do. But um, Two Side Squad was great. Like Joel Kinnaman um, is a buddy of mine. I really like him, and we hung out a little bit. And then uh, Violet Davis is an actress I really admire and love from New York. I've known her, and so it's great to see her. And you know, it was a fun little shoot, but I was only there very briefly. Whereas Black Widow is like a whole thing. I mean. The Red Guardian is such a great character. I mean, I can't wait for people to see this movie um, because, you know, I can't tell you that much about it, but it's just a great role and I loved inhabiting it. It was a very, again, it was like a difficult shoot because it was a lot of stunts. It was big action stuff, which I'm, you know, I'm 45 years old. It's like my body's not built to like, you know, run around like that, but it is, it does get some very funny footage when it does run around like that. Uh, but it's, you know, it, it was, it was a lot of, it was difficult to shoot, but it was also like a lot of fun. I mean, the scenes are incredible. The director, um, this woman, Kate Shortland is incredible. Florence Pugh, Rachel Weiss, Scarlett Johansson. It's like a dream cast. So I'm just excited for people to see it. I loved Black Widow. Like, I loved making it. We actually, we had Andy Park on uh, Mainframe yesterday, and he's actually the uh, director of visual development uh, oh, wow. for the MCU. And he, we've had him on the show before, and he talked a lot about uh, sort of the design of Taskmaster. He's the guy who pretty much comes oh, up wow. with the concept development and stuff. And so I want to ask you, I know you can't talk about the movie itself, but I want to kind of gauge your reaction when you first started seeing these trailers roll out, because I'm sure you haven't seen the movie yet. I mean, Red Guardian looks like a hilariously wonderful character. What was your reaction when you first saw the first trailer, but then the second trailer, which highlighted you guys, you a little bit more? Uh, I mean, you know, I I think it's great. I'm as excited as anybody else. Like, the minute after I shoot these things, I just become like a fan, like everybody else. Like, I don't Mm -hmm. even associate with with it myself anymore it just becomes like a thing that i think is cool um yeah i mean and the character's just so I'm, i'd be interested to see what andy did it, andy talked about the development of uh, a taskmaster yeah yeah did he talk at all about the development of the suits with the red guardian and stuff a little bit he talked about the suits because there were some there was some really interesting development phases on red guardian and even at one point too like you know we because when they hired me, I kind of had this crazy beard and there was some discussions, some internal discussions about whether or not I shave it and stuff. And then, but they let me keep it, which I thought was really great. And it, it's really plays really well with what they designed for the outfit. I mean, it's this monstrous, insane beard with like these white straggly bits. I mean, it's insane. And the character himself is, I mean, he's a bit insane. (laughs) Um, But I, you know, like I like him. He's he's very funny. He's got like a lot of funny stuff, but he's also got like, you know, he's got some depth too. I mean, he made some bad choices in his life. Uh, the Soviet Union kind of fell apart when he least expected it. Um, he he's had some tragedy. He's had some problems with competition with uh, some other superheroes. There's all these sort of little things, and also he's kind of a badass. You know, like he he can still fight. Uh, and so there's like, it's a great character. I just can't wait for you to see it. And they're definitely leaning into the the comedic qualities of the character in the trailer. Yeah. But you talk about the beard. I mean, just the beard itself becomes almost like a, <laughs> you know, a, a, a joke because he's trying to put on the on the mask and it still fits and all that great stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm curious. I, mean, I know two stupid faces too. Yeah. You hear a lot of people when they work on MCU films that they only get a sample of the script as to uh, prevent spoilers and stuff. Did you get the whole script? In advance, or was it uh, kind of like Endgame when they would just get a chunk? No, we got the whole thing. I don't know why they gave it to us. That was a really bad move on their part. I mean, we're <laughs> just starting with the, with this thing, and they gave it to us. I guess, um, you know, with something like Endgame, I guess that's like, you know, a kind of bigger thing, and they have maybe more people to worry about. With us, it was mainly like the four of us. And there's like OT and Ray Winston and... Uh, and um, we've heard too, but it's, it's mainly like the, the four of us who 
we needed to work so intensely on the whole storyline that I think without the whole structure of the film, it would have really suffered. And in fact, when we came in there, we had like two weeks of rehearsals where we were training for the stunts and all, but also we would sit down with Kate and um, the writer and the producers, and we would come up with all these other things. And I think we added a lot to the movie as we went. And we could only have done that with the script, but you know, we brought a lot of ourselves to it. And I think Kate really wanted to make a personal movie and something with resonance. I know with, certainly with um, Natasha and Yelena's character, like she was very interested in making a movie about, um, you know, young women and like, um, and, you know, wanted their take on this relationship between these two, you know, young women. And, and I, I, I think, again, like these movies, I understand security and stuff, but I get kind of annoyed because as artists, like it's so important for us to know the whole arc of what we're playing so we can set things up and like lay pipe for things down the road and things like that. So they really did allow us that. And it was, it was great. Well, it was really exciting to find out that because I mean, so many movies are getting pushed into 2021. Black Widow still has a November 2020 release date. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll see, you know, that I think that all dep- I mean, it would be great. I would love to I would love to to have that happen, but you know, I I I think the funniest thing about this whole pandemic is that we all are like first year sociology students. Like we all are just spitballing about the like from the president to like us. It did, and and everyone in between. Like we're all just spitballing, going like, well, I think we'll be out of here in May. And like nobody has a clue. So I think that's a thing. Like we, you know, they told us they were pushing the release date, and I think that's prudent and good, but we'll have to see if it if it actually happens. I would love to have everybody at the theater in November, but as long as it's safe and and it's a uh, you know, place we can all be safe in. Yeah, totally true. I mean, I knew when I found out I was going to have David Harbour on, I would be jumping back and forth from Black Widow, Black back to Stranger Things. But I do have one more Stranger Things question before we open it up to the chat. I mean, the, the show has evolved so much, and the cast of characters, the actors, have gone from uh, relative obscurity to just superstardom. How has the vibe changed on set from season one to season two, now that uh, obviously paychecks are getting bigger and, and people are becoming more and more uh, superstars and household names? Has it changed a lot, the vibe on set? You know, the vibe when you actually get to work on set hasn't changed hardly at all. Like, I think that we, because I do think that the intentions of all of us when we're shooting the show, I think we all love it. No matter what we play out in our public lives, like, we all just love making that show. And we kind of geek out about how much we love these characters. And I was there from the very beginning. But also, it doesn't matter how famous uh, Millie Bobby Brown gets. Like, when she comes in and does a scene with me and plays Levin with me, all that stuff, all the cosmetics and the magazine covers, it all drops away. And it just becomes two actors who know each other very well. And I like I've known her since she was 11 years old and sort of a watch and have an avuncular loving relationship with her. And that's all there when we shoot now. Now, in the in between, like, you know, in the in betweens and in the like read throughs and the press events, like, yeah, it's gotten ridiculous and stupid (laughs) and all the things I hate. And yet all the things, you know, that I myself play into, I mean. It has all the trappings of everything you could imagine that uh, the horror show and the wonderfulness of fame entails. But when we get to actually shooting, it feels like the first couple of weeks. It just feels like that pure love of storytelling that we all have. And we got one chat right here uh, from Kyra N writes, uh, Mr. David Harbour, huge fan here. I'm very respectful, I might add. Uh, <laughs> got my Stranger Things shirt on. What is the nerdiest thing about you? <laughs> And do you geek out on anything specifically or oh, like anything? Oh no, Kyra. Oh no, <laughs> Kyra. I mean the amount of uh the amount of nerdy things about me is insane. Like I don't think there are uh, unnerdy things about me. I mean, oh god, I can't uh it just uh, I get tense even confessing it, but um I went through a vortex like uh 14 13 years ago where I played World of Warcraft uh, almost, uh, you know, 12, 14 hours a day for a couple months there. I mean, the nerdiest nerd. I'm those kids in in, uh, South Park. 
So I have that. Um, I used to play Dungeons and Dragons when I was a kid. I do love video games, technology like that. Um, I used to even paint uh, Warhammer figurines. Yeah. But I never had the guts to actually sit down and play the tabletop with the other kids because it always seemed like there were 12 year old kids who could just destroy me. Couldn't <laughs> do that. But I would paint the figures. There's a tremendous amount of nerdy things about me, Kira. So thanks for embarrassing the hell out of me. Thank, way to go, Cairo. Way to, way to embarrass <laughs> David Harbour. He was feeling really cool with his new mustache. Uh, yeah, 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 made him mustache <laughs> and everything. I'm feeling like all cool. <laughs> we got another one. Uh, uh, thank you, obviously, Comics with Bueller for the super chat. Uh, David, I saw you have a comic featuring the first appearance of Red Guardian in your collection. Yeah. You also have the first Hellboy appearance. Um, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I do have the first Red Guardian uh, appearance. I have it hanging on my wall. Um, the Hellboy appearances, I, I don't know which is the first. I have the whole omnibus, though, like of all the graphic novels. So I assume I have the first. But I, I just have like that omnibus of every single one. Like it's got like the Wild Hunt and like all those different uh, graphic novels. So I don't actually know which is the first one. Sorry. Uh but I'm sure I have it somewhere. It's probably somewhere. Uh, Caitlin C., again, thank you very much for the super chat. It's going to Ooh. charity. R writes, hi, David. Uh, what video games are you playing during this quarantine? And are you still going to make Twitch channel? I hope yeah. you're doing well. I was thinking about uh, making a Twitch channel. Uh, uh, I'm still thinking about that. It, apparently, it's a lot harder. I thought you could just drop in and like do a Twitch like you can with Instagram Live. But you, you know, there's this thing called OBS, and there's all these different panels and all these things. My friend, um, uh, I have a couple of friends who are Twitch streamers, like uh, Man vs. Game and uh, Grizzly Guy Gaming and these guys, Lars Fest. And these guys uh, were trying to help me out with uh, setting this thing up. And I went down the rabbit hole for a little bit. And then now I've abandoned all of it. So thank you guys for letting me waste your time. Um, but we'll see. I may get it back on. The video games I am playing in quarantine, though, are I, I just got the virtual reality thing for PlayStation. You know, the VR goggles or whatever. So I've been playing a lot of Beat Saber. Do you know this game? Oh, yeah, that one. Oh, man. I love me some Beat Saber. <laughs> and I just got uh, Ping Pong. And the other game that I play, which is an indie game that I've played for years that I just love on the PlayStation, and you play it on any platform, really, is The Binding of Isaac, which is like a small indie platformer, like kind of like Super Mario Brothers, but a very dark, twisted version of it with a mom who's trying to kill her son because she's told by God that she has to sacrifice the lamb. Uh, anyway. Rated T for teen. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I know we got a lot more uh, questions, but while we wait for some, uh, going back to Stranger Things, I mean, when I, I remember when I first saw the trailer for Stranger Things season one, I mean, I, I could tell immediately this is going to be something special. It's something like we've never seen before. Did you know in that first script reading uh, when you were handed the, 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 the gig, did you know right away that this was something that no one's ever really seen before? And, and, and did uh, you know how it could explode? No, I didn't. I, I loved the script when I read it, and I thought it was really... Um, special but then you know as we're shooting like you get into this very insular place where you're just dealing with each other and you're just in this rabbit hole of months and months of shooting this thing and for me like i start to second guess it like look maddie schwartz is asking how my book's going uh and that's another thing where it's like my book is the same way like you get into this thing where you just you're just with it and we were just with the showrunners and you, and you don't know anymore like you can't even see straight because you're still guided by these principles of what you think are creative and what you think is interesting but at a certain point you have no response from the outside world and so nobody's laughing or clapping or whatever you, you have no idea and i think after i finished the first season i was so drained i remember coming home uh and seeing a friend of mine and going out to dinner and I was so like, I could barely speak. I just had this weird thing where I felt so like drained and just kind of awkward. And like, I had been in this bubble and I was gone. And so I, I had no idea what we made. And then even before it was coming out, there were very little advertisements and I thought Netflix was going to bury it. And I really thought it was going to be, you know, it was just going to come and go. And I thought that, I'd be back to, you know, auditioning for something else or like whatever. I blew my shot in the Netflix series. And then it came out and like that weekend, it just exploded like nothing I've ever been in. And I was, uh, you know, gratified and proud and just felt great. 
Well, speaking of other works you've done, thanks, Maddie Schwartz. I hope that answers your question. I read somewhere, I mean, you've been in tons of movies, um, even before Stranger Things, I mean, Brokeback Mountain, Quantum of Solace, Green Hornet, uh, Suicide Squad. Obviously, I read one time, and tell me if this is true and if you still do it, that you actually, um, yeah, I think it was uh, A Walk Among the Tombstones. You went, I believe, to one of the early screenings of it with an audience, and you sat in the background because you played a really dark, like, kind of an evil character in that movie. Yeah, and right. you went and you watched and, and sort of got a vibe for the audience's reaction to that character and they actually laughed to this really dark dark character do you still ever go to movies and kind of sit in the back and, and um, engage audience reactions do i do that anymore i don't really what was the last time i went i feel like the last time i went might have been that walk among the tombstones i feel like it might have been walk among the tombstones i think i might have seen equalizer in a theater too i like to go like like Saturday nights in New York or Friday or Saturday nights in New York, like around 11, like really late night to like Union Square or like Times Square, like a big packed house with a lot of loud, drunk people yelling at the <laughs> screen, going like, don't go in there. What are you doing? Like so, uh, yeah, but I haven't been, I haven't been in a while. Maybe I'll do that with Black Widow. I should All go right. see. I should go see Black Widow in a theater. That would be come, fun. Come to Chicago and see it with okay. us. Okay, I'll go I'll tell anybody. Chicago. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, you, there's a lot of quotes from you out there that I read online. I want to read uh, one to you. You once said, "I want to bring back love handles and eating sandwiches." <laughs> Can you expound on that statement? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, what's that statement? <laughs> I guess it, at the time it was just like people. Um, I felt like I was battling narcissism. Like there's a lot of narcissism in our culture. And then there's some narcissism in me that I'm always constantly battling, which is reflected uh, in everything I say. But I, uh, I, I think I just, you know, I just wanted people to kind of enjoy their lives. I feel like a lot of American culture can be, saving up or storing up for something or the next thing or the next thing. And I feel like we sometimes do that with our bodies. Like we're always trying to train for something or get at a certain point, I'll be like, you know, ripped or I'll feel this way or blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I guess what I meant by the sandwich, the love handles thing is like, I want you to enjoy your life and I want you to enjoy your body and enjoy the time you have because uh, this actually is it. Like right now, like this is it. This is what we get. This is it. So yeah, that's, another, my, that's my Zen Buddhist uh, dollar <laughs> of the day. Wrapped around a sandwich. Uh, we got another comment here uh, from Quentin Velozzi, writes, uh, also a big fan of Mr. Harvard. You identify with the 80s themes of Stranger Things. I mean, that's kind of fun, right? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in the 80s. So I literally, I'm almost the same age as the kids. I think the kids are a little bit older than me, but I was born in 1975. So in 1983, I would have been eight years old. Um, 11 is theoretically 11. So I'm a little bit behind them. I'm like Priya's age, like uh, Erica. I'm like Erica's age. So I remember all that stuff. In fact, like this past season when we were shooting in that mall, there were all these stores that were set dressed, which I don't know if you saw or not in the background. I don't know what we really shot, but there was like a Walden books. I don't know if there's any 40 plus people out there that know what Walden books was. There you go. There was like an amazing store. They also had something called the ground round, which I used to eat at as a, at a kid, as a kid. Uh, and you could throw peanut shells on the ground. I remember I love that, but there was like, there were all these old stores and I, I thought it was really cool. It was like took me right back to being 16 years old and walking around looking for the new Debbie Gibson CD on the mall, you know, <laughs> there you go um you want to say i got some fun quotes as i wait for more people to put in more comments you said i'm around six four and 240 pounds so i really feel uh that intimidated by other men i don't really feel intimidated by other men but i got to give it up to that terry bradshaw that <laughs> guy is a bulldog wow Whoa. yeah terry bradshaw yeah, comment, I, I, did a, I did a Tide commercial for the Super Bowl, and the year before, Terry Bradshaw had done the Tide commercial. And so we had a little promo thing together, and I I got to or had to hang out with him for a day, not sure which, but that guy is a beast, and he's, you know, I'm used to sort of being very – big personality but i've never met someone with a larger personality than that i felt completely dwarfed both in stature and in personality that man is uh he's an animal he's an animal a bulldog jennifer garcia writes which character that you have done was the most fun to play 
Mm. Um, I mean, in terms of my film and TV work, I would definitely say Hopper. Uh, I would definitely say Hopper. I love, um, yeah, I just love Hopper. Um, and then, you know, my cheesy um, theater uh, background, I played Hamlet when I was at uh, this place called Theater Monmouth in Maine, and that's been my favorite other role in the theater. Well, I think we got time for about one more before we move on to section number two of Mainframe Comic Con, the big city send out. Uh, thank you for the super chat rights. Hi, David. What are some of the qualities you look for when working with directors? What are the things uh, that you look or things that you don't look or like or don't like? Um, I, I like directors. It's funny. Like I, I kind of like directors who, you know, like, of course you want a director who's going to help you. But at this point, I actually just want a director to not lie to me. And I want a director to stay out of my way. Um, and if they can do that, I think they're great directors. Like a lot of times directors will, will tell you something and they're lying to you because it expedites some of their process. And I wind up and you'd see it in the edit that they've messed with you in a certain way. And I hate that. Um, and then the other thing that can sometimes happen is directors can be overexcited and over involved in your process. And sometimes, I mean, one of the greatest things about the Duffer brothers were, I think that first season when we shot, I think they gave me like one note. I think they had hired me because they wanted me and they wanted what I brought. But as an actor, you have to show up with your own artistry and your own point of view. And I think that took me a long time to develop. And I would encourage any other actors out there that if you have your own point of view, you know, you can, and you meet directors who will leave you alone. You can do a lot. Uh, it's perfect segue to this final question, which I think is a great way to wrap this up. Lost in Comics writes, is Hopper your natural personality? Because I kind of get that vibe. It's so funny. Like, to a certain degree, <laughs> like, yes. Uh, to a certain degree, Hopper is me. But I do think it's funny when, um, you know, uh, there was, like, I'm an artist who lives in New York. Like, I'm a weird artist who lives in New York. Hopper's like a Midwestern sheriff. So, like, I, I would not do well uh, in the Midwest, like, policing people. I'm kind of a... You know, I'm I'm like a I'm like a weird New York artist. So he has the same qualities inside, but uh, we do not behave the same way uh, in sort of reality. Sorry, Lost in Comics. I don't think that was the answer you were hoping yeah, for. Sorry. You, you want me to say? You just want me to say yes? I know I you mean, do. Yes, it's me. I'm Dad. Come here. Let me hold you. It's art doesn't comic. always imitate life. Well, Dave, <laughs> thank you so much for Thanks, being man. here. We can't thank you enough. Let's go ahead and end with one more high five. I think we got wait, this one. Oh wait, how do you do it? You go this way. You that go way. I'm up top. Way. Other way. Okay. Right. There we go. Bam. Hey! All right, David Harbour. Thank you so much. We're all looking Thanks, forward guys. to Black Widow. We hope it comes out in November, but if it doesn't, we're still looking forward to it when it comes out. I hope so too. Nice talking to you guys. Thanks for doing this for charity and everything. It's really incredible. Oh, thank, thank you very all and for donating and everything too. It's great. All right, guys. So this is how this is going to work. It has already been four hours here on Mainframe Comic Con. So we got to wrap up this feed, but we're starting another feed. We've still got an entire day and night worth of content coming up next is the uh, cast and crew of the show robot chicken including seth green uh the entire robot chicken crew is coming out right next so if you're on the mainframe comic-con.com website go to that live video you'll see there's this player and then just under it is going to be the start of another four hours of fun here at mainframe so we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up guys check out uh feed number two starting right about now at mainframe comic-con.com thanks a lot for watching guys click that donate button while you're there and we'll see you in just a minute.